Okay, so hi everyone, and in this tutorial, we'll be looking at Express.js. So this tutorial will cover basic and will progress to advanced concepts of Express.js. So Express.js is a web framework for Node.js. It is fast, robust, and is synchronous. It is a flexible and minimal Node.js web application framework. It provides various features for mobile and web application. So now we're thinking, what is XPJS? So look at that. So the server uh, of Node.js framework. So it's an application, web application server of Node.js framework. So designed for building uh, interactive web pages. So let's go in. So what is Express framework? Express is a minimal and flexible Node.js web application framework that provides a robust set of features for web and mobile development. Xperia.js is a Node.js web application server framework, which is specifically designed for building single page, multi page, and hybrid web pages. So it has become the standard server framework for Node.js. Xperia is the backend part of something known as the main stack or the main stack. So well, we're looking at the main stack in this one. So what, what do you mean by main stack? So the main stack is a free and open source JavaScript software stack for building dynamic website and web application, which has the following component. It has the MongoDB, that is the standard MySQL database. It has the Express.js, the default web applications framework, and React.js. So React is a free and open source front-end JavaScript library for building user interfaces based on the UI component. And we also have the Node.js framework used for scalable server-side and networking application. So prerequisites to this course are you need to know your JavaScript and HTML and the basic knowledge of MongoDB. But if you don't know MongoDB, we'll cover MongoDB as we go along. So features of Express. So, so it makes development very easy. So we have one of one of the features of Express is rapid programming, routing, templating, debugging, set of mini So we're looking at each of them one after the other. So rapid programming in the server side. Is facilitated with Node.js functionality since it is Node.js framework. It contains many of Node.js features into functions. So these features can be easily called anywhere in the program. It helps rapid application development. Express is the quicker uh, than Node.js. Express JS can easily do a complex task that can take too much of time in Node.js in fewer amount of time and fewer lines of code also. So what is routing? Routing is to determine how an application responds to the client's request. Each route has at least one handler function and then they executed when the route is matched. So Express.js provides the advanced and powerful routing mechanism. It can handle highly dynamic URLs. It is effective, it is efficient. It defines a routing table for each route. So templating, so templating provides a templating engine. So template engine allow web pages to have dynamic content by constructing HTML pages on the server side. It takes a significant load from the client side due to enabling dynamic content. So Express use POG. We also have another one we call the EJS and other types as a templating engine. These engines are used for removing and cluttering of server code. It helps HTML templates, HTML templates. So POG has various features like filter, filter includes inheritance, interpolation, and so on and so forth. So it's a very powerful um, tool to use. So debugging. So debugging is the most complicated task for a developer. And even in this tutorial, we'll be having some bugs and we have to fix them. So sometimes our code may contain too many bugs then it is important to debug all that. So Expert.js provides a powerful mechanism for debugging. It allows developers to quickly pinpoint the parts of the code that causes the bug. So what are middlewares? So Expert.js using middlewares for arranging systematically different function calls. It is a cluster of code that has access to user requests, the application response, and the next middleware to be used. So what are types of middleware? We have application level middleware, we have the error handler, we have the router level, we have the built-in, we have the third party. So as we go on in the when we move into coding, just observe all this change. Whenever we are having something to handle error uh, in the handler, so that, that's, we regard to that as an error handler. And when we are talking about uh, something like um, router level, you see when we have router and we're using the parts and 
by using um, um, a, a middleware to, to control that. So we, we just cover all that when we start coding. So um, the next part is advantage of Express. So one of the advantages there are many frameworks outside there, but why is Express important? So it's ultra fast. It is an ultra fast and output. It has ultra fast input and output. It is simple, minimal, and flexible, robust API that makes routing easy, MVC like structure. It enables Node.js performance. So easy to configure and customize, allows to create REST API server. So we're creating REST API in this, um, this section. So easy database connectivity. So getting data with um, Express, we need something called the Node Package Manager. And to install it, it can be installed from their official website. So you go to Node js.org and you can download it from there so after downloading it you can now install express so when you download it's going to install when you download the node it's going to also install npm for you automatically so install express module with npm command so we're going to look at that in the next slide so in the next slide how to install express express get installed by the node package manager this can be done by executing the following line in the command line so that is npm install express so that's easy as that so using express so i have a good sniper here so they're showing us how to set up our express so the first thing is we require the express module that's the first line the express goes require express then we uh initialize the app by uh calling the express function and we set up a port where we are going to serve our code or our server then you have a get request here that helps us to in the routing so it's going to get that part so the, the slash there is the part in which you need to look for. So, and the request and response uh, that's sending out early word is the handler. So, when we want to serve, we have to use update listing and we have to put in the ports. After putting in the ports, we can optionally put in a function that fires and shows us uh, a result that is running in our terminal. So, that's what we did here. So, console.log server running on ports. So, so that's that. So I've just done the explanation of um, of the code sniper. So this is also it. So the app is the instance of the express module. Then the method, you know, we get we are using get here. So the get method that I've done. So that's one of the methods. So we have the paths. So the paths in this one, we don't have anything there, just a nine slash. So but the one we have here, we have home about contacts and we have the handler. That's the one sending out the early word. So concept to know, you know, you want to know about HTTP request status code, like example of status code 200, that means to say it was a success. So 201 to say created, uh, want to say 404 to say uh, not found, 400 bad request, you know, and 403 forbidding and so on and so forth. So headers and so on. So want to know about JSON object notation, arrow functions, which are going to be using promises and MVC pattern, which will cover so brief about the terminal. So what's the terminal? The terminal is an environment on your computer where you can directly run command for the computer to do things you can or cannot achieve by using normal user interfaces. On Mac, the default terminal is called terminal. On Linux, it's also called terminal. On Windows, the default terminal is a command prompt. So you can also use the Windows PowerShell and you can also install Git bash on your system to have a terminal experience. So, so that's the end of the introduction to Express Framework. So thank you for staying behind.